friends. Today I want to talk with you about how to turn what comes in your pattern into the pieces that you need to cut out of the wool. Every pattern designer does it differently and so I want to go over a couple of different options with some different patterns that I have. I'll come back to this one in the end because that's the one that I did. Um, this is a Vicki Higley pattern. It's called North Pole. Okay, so she includes in her patterns um, if it's complicated to arrange them, she'll put a pattern placement together. But as you can see, all of these little pattern pieces here, the little dashed lines are places where the wool is going to overlap. For example, um, on these little pants, the little feet will overlap and the shirt will overlap. And this little piece right here will overlap and you can see the dashed line right here. That's where the head will overlap. So you don't want wool to butt up against each other. You want one side to overlap the other side. And so sometimes you'll get a pattern where those little dashed lines are drawn. If not, generally it's because it's obvious and you can do your own um, of those. Oftentimes when the overlap is listed like this, there's not a actual placement guide for it. And so um, that you'll be using those dashed lines to tell where you should overlap. Okay, this one is a pattern by uh, Carrie Stitch, Carrie Green. Um, let's pull out one of these. I should have looked ahead of time and picked one, but here's one right here. Okay, so hers um, patterns show the finished product of what it's going to look like. Um, not the stitches, but it shows the other things. And this one is a good one because it explains that... Even though I really only need this outside flower to go under the next one a quarter of an inch, that would be kind of a pain to do that. And so oftentimes you will choose to just layer it. I generally try to not layer more than, th than four layers, your background and three more. I try to keep it to less than that. But in this case, you would trace the entire flower and then the, for that piece, you trace this one for the next one and you trace the circle for the inside. But this stem right here, you don't want it to end right there. So you would just make it a quarter of an inch or so longer so it has room to go underneath it. That's also the case in something like this. The reason being that even though we could make this piece just a quarter of an inch right here, sometimes when you do that, it, the change in the levels looks a little bit funny. So if I were doing this one, I would do the scallops and I would go under just a quarter of an inch, but I would do the whole teardrop and then put this on top of that teardrop. And all of those are drawn from the patterns. Um, the other pattern that I have for you to look at here is um, one of a Sue Spargo pattern. This one's called Homegrown. Um, in this case, the patterns are drawn like this and you have to figure out in some places where there's, a, you're supposed to extend this to this, there'll be a dashed line, but you have to do, if it's overlapped, you won't need extra quarter of an inch. But for example, on this one, I know I want my house to go under that um, roof a quarter of an inch and I want my chimney to go under that one a quarter of an inch. Um, Here's another example right here. I'm gonna want the house to go under a quarter of an inch and the chimney to go under. Let's see if there's any other. This has the same thing over and over again. So uh, this, the plants right here inside of the pot are gonna need to go an extra quarter of an inch under. These pieces are gonna wanna go a quarter of an inch under the roof. And so as you're putting it together, you need to think, I don't want the edges to butt together. What do I need to do and where do I need a quarter of an inch? So let's go back to this one. Now, Peace in the Pines, oftentimes I find it easier to give it to you on a um, vellum sheet. And the reason for that, I'll show you later. But you can just put it on top of a piece of white paper and that will help. So let's look at this one and see if there's the ones that are gonna go under or if we're just gonna overlap them. Okay, let's look at the bird's wing first. The bird's wing is on top of the bird and I would not Again, you could make the bird just go a quarter of an inch under the wing, but I think that that's more trouble than just doing the entire bird and the entire wing. The question really is this little tiny tip right here. Do I want the bird to have that tip underneath it or do I just want the wing to be on top? Um, I decided I just wanted the wing to be on top that because it was just one layer, it wouldn't show the difference in layers. Um, but that's a personal preference one. Same thing with these guys. I could, um, they're just gonna overlap each other a little bit for my pine cones right here, so I'm not gonna worry about that. 
When it came time to do the black and the um, yellow here, again, I could take the red just in that far, but I decided that they were small enough, I was just gonna overlap them. So my red bird, when I traced the red bird, I traced the red bird all the way out here, and then I traced the black piece all the way, and then I traced the yellow piece all the way. So what do I mean by tracing? Well, it depends on the, pro the, um, the way that you're going to do it. In order to cut out our patterns, pinning like you do in sewing is not the best way to do it because pinning um, tends to distort the wool and you don't get the right shape. So what we try to use is um, either, there's one method called the freezer paper method. This is a sheet of freezer paper. The other method is the fusible method and this is a piece of heat and bond light. And you can hopefully see a little bit, it's kind of hard with this light, but that it has a mesh um, adhesive on the back side of it. When you are using freezer paper, I'm gonna pick up my one that I used here. Freezer paper goes on top of the wool. So we would take the wool, I don't have a red piece handy, but that's okay. We'd iron our freezer paper on it, then we cut out along the line, and then we can peel the freezer paper off. A couple of things, it goes on the top, and because of that, it's easier to do um, fussy cutting with freezer paper. The other thing is that freezer paper just has some wax on the back of it. And so because of that, and it's a very light layer, you can peel off the freezer paper and use all the pieces right up next to it because they don't have any adhesive on it that's gonna be a problem. So freezer paper, you're gonna trace the pattern exactly the same way that it is. Adhesive goes on the back side because it's going to have that adhesive on it and you're going to peel it off. That'll leave, then the adhesive will stick to your wool and you'll be able to just lay it down and iron it in place. This goes on the back side, and because it goes on the back side, you have to flip it. So, for example, if I were tracing, um, let's trace the bird wing on this one. And I have it on a light box here, but I'm not sure how that'll show up with my camera. Okay, so let's trace the bird wing on this. And I would make notes when I was working on, um, you saw how. On Vicki Higley's pattern, she labeled all the little boots and pants on those elves as one, two, three. I tend to do the same thing or make it, this is flower A, and I'll put A1, A2. Label them some way so that you know what piece they are. This is the wing. Okay. And then move your freezer paper. You can also do this on a lighted window if it's daylight. Okay, tracing is not my best talent. So I think what I'm gonna do here is do my black so that it goes all the way underneath, just like that. That way the beak won't look like it's kind of falling off the face of the, um, of the bird. Because otherwise, because the tip of it over here would only be one layer thick, it would look like it was falling off. There's the beak. So that's the process that I would use to trace it. Again, number them. A, B, C, D, then you'll know what order they go in when you're putting them back together. If I were doing the uh, the heat and bond method, I just flipped it backwards, okay? So pay attention to some designers will automatically flip it if they consistently use freezer paper or if they consistently use heat and bond light or an adhesive, they will already flip the pattern in the opposite direction. So look at your finished product so you know that you're getting it the right way. Whoops. I tried to sit everything where it would be handy. So on these guys, just trace. And here's a perfect example. This one is um, the one that, it, well, on the other side, it'll be on the right. I'm gonna number them on my, let's turn it this way. I'm gonna call this guy one, this guy two, and this guy three. And that way when I'm tracing number three, I'm gonna put a three on it and then an arrow that goes up so I know which direction's up. Number two, whoops, you can't trace it. You have to move your freezer paper or your other in between because you need them to not overlap. Two, and that direction's up. The reason I'm marking them as up is because when I did these, I did not mark up and then because they're almost round, I had a hard time telling which way they go. That's one and that's up, okay? Now, let's shut this guy off. Now we've created our pattern. I wanted to do one sample for you so that you would see if it was 
what you wanted to do if it was going to be um, underneath at a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to hurry and draw something right here. And then I want, there we go. And that's going to be the top of my flower. I know, that's a pathetic flower. So if I wanted that to go underneath, in my mind, I would go, okay, that means I need the petals to go under about a quarter of an inch. So then when I'm tracing these petals, I did okay till the third one and it just looks lame. I'm going to draw that line out to that quarter inch line. And I'm probably going to leave it as dotted so that I know that. I might even put a firm line right here where the firm one is. And that way I'll know how much is going to go under. And so that's something that you as um, a, a stitcher have to figure out is where do I want it to overlap. There have been a few places in my designs where I have um, not cut them correctly like that and had to butt the, th the two fabrics up against each other, but they tend to um, not look very nice if you do that. So that is how you can put your patterns together. And again, you can do it on freezer paper, just remember to, or on adhesive, just remember to swap it the opposite direction or freezer paper. Freezer paper goes on top, adhesive goes on the bottom. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.